brain cell and DNA damage, physical pain, cataracts, heart arrhythmia, compromised immunity. I'm sure by now many of you have heard about the 5G wireless technology and the potential dangers it poses to our health. The electromagnetic frequencies we're about to be exposed to are a massive step up in intensity from the 4G and earlier technologies. There are a lot of scary theories about what constant exposure of these high intensity frequencies will do to us. Even if you don't totally buy into all of the claims, it is still very smart to be prepared. So here are the vitally essential supplements for protecting yourself from 5G radiation. Radio waves that we are used to are of the long wave form. A cell tower will transmit waves over long distances to cover a large region. The longer the wave, the lower the intensity. This intensity is measured in hertz. 4G and all of the previous wireless technologies generally admitted waves in the 1 to 2 gigahertz range. You may know some people that even felt effects from being around these wireless frequencies. In the effort to constantly progress the wireless industry, the next upgrade, 5G, will allow for more capabilities and faster internet services. In order to do that, more power is going to be needed, which means higher frequency bands are needed. This also means that instead of having one cell tower covering a large area, many wireless transmission devices are needed to be placed in closer proximity. This will especially be the case in cities and towns. I've already spotted many new cell boxes popping up all around my area. These emit the millimeter wave frequency bands. The kinds of frequencies coming out of these boxes are going to be in the 20 to 40 gigahertz range. That's not just a step up in intensity, that's an exponentially massive step up from the 4G. Essentially every city is going to be a hot box of electro smog. And it's only going to get worse. Plans are already in the works for furthering this technology and pushing it up into the 60 to 90 gigahertz range. To put these numbers in perspective, the US military developed a weapon called the Active Denial System, which was a direct energy weapon that fires a high powered beam of 95 gigahertz towards an individual. It is intended as a non-lethal weapon, but so are tasers. Regardless of how bad you think this will get, it's never a bad idea to prepare your body for increased exposure to radiation. Diet is obviously the first thing you should be modifying, but this is a supplement channel, so I will leave that part for others to discuss. Here are the first supplements you should be looking for. Potassium iodide. I've covered this compound in previous videos, so check those out too if you like. But when it comes to radiation of any kind, the thyroid is the most susceptible and the most important gland for your protection. The thyroid ensures programmed cell death of damaged and diseased cells. Cancer cells shrink when given iodine. And it also helps to remove heavy metals and has a protective effect on brain tissue. It's always important to be sure not to overdose iodine. I would stick to the recommended amounts, but be consistent with it as sometimes it's hard to retain iodine with all the exposure we have to the other halogens. Those halogens are able to push out iodine and compete for some of the same receptors. It's also very helpful to take it with magnesium, vitamin C, and selenium for better bioavailability. Next up is spirulina. This provides cell protection and proper bone marrow functioning, including production of red blood cells, which are destroyed from EMF radiation. Be sure to take the recommended serving size consistently here as well. I would take the powder form as it's easier to get a large amount in quickly. I don't enjoy the taste, uh, so mixing into drinks is just not really for me. If you're like me, try throwing a scoop of it directly into your mouth and quickly washing it down with, say, an orange juice. That's the quick and painless way, I think. I already kind of mentioned selenium with the iodine stack. Selenium is so important because it protects your DNA from radiation damage. Add in the fact that it helps better utilize iodine, and you have a must-need mineral here in selenium for EMF radiation. Mineral intake in general is vitally important when exposed to radiation. Electrolytes especially. You're far more likely to lose these nutrients because of radiation. So if you're already concerned that you may be low in potassium, magnesium, calcium, be sure to supplement accordingly. 
Also check out my videos on electrolytes for great food options as well. EMF radiation actually removes the protective calcium coating that's formed around the outside of cells. And this leads to the greater losses of minerals. Finally, I wanna mention supplements with high antioxidant content. You may already know of some pretty great ones. Uh, if you're currently taking some, keep doing it. These are supplements like curcumin, alpha lipoic acid, green tea, vitamin C, vitamin E, and astaxanthin. I'm not a major fan personally of these as many can lower testosterone levels, but if you know that you have just had a major exposure to radiation, then by all means go nuts. The vitamins are obviously of no threat to T levels, but the others are questionable at best. I would prefer to just eat a high antioxidant content diet. So there you have it. When it really comes down to it, you need to look out for your own health. Communications companies are not going to stop their quest for more economic growth and certainly aren't going to admit that they're doing any harm to people. Don't sit around and let your body deteriorate. Get protected now. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Later.